all the debt that we've brought into our marriage seven years later, we are technically debt free. Technically, yes. By technicality at this point, yes. Personally, I've always been told that you're never financially going to be ready for this. You're never going to be financially ready for your next child. You're never going to be debt free. Well, I, we I, hate, <laughs> I hate to say it, but because we're two minds that, yeah, we might think a little bit different, but in the we end... We think a lot differently, not just a little. We think a lot differently. But, but in the end, we have a we're goal. Very, we're very on the same page with our finances. That's a good point to have. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, uh, if you haven't noticed the title already, it is Debt Free Student Loans Are Paid Off. But we're not going to get into that right now. We have some grocery shopping to do and then after we come home and get groceries put away and get Serenity down for a nap, then we'll talk about that. So we are pretty excited. We have paid off the student loans. So we're going to go shopping and then we will get a little bit more into maybe what we did to get to the point that we are right now. I want some Lego banana. We got done shopping a little while ago. Serenity is down for a nap. So now we're gonna talk about why, or better better question, we're gonna talk about how we got to be debt free. Now when we say debt free, it, it doesn't mean, debt free doesn't mean that you'd have no bills and that you, know, you own everything and you're pumping your own water and generating your own electricity. That's not the idea of debt free, okay? Debt free simply means that the bank doesn't own any of our stuff. We're not paying on loans anymore to be able to, to get around in cars or a student loan debt is all paid off, things like that. That's what we're going by when we say debt free here. We do have credit cards, yes, but those credit cards act almost as debit cards. We pay them off at the end of each month. So mm -hmm. in this particular video, the credit cards don't, don't count them. They don't count. In this particular one. Um, would it be great to not have to rely on credit cards in the future? Of course it would. In a reality situation we're probably always going to have credit cards. We just will not have credit card debt. Correct. Do, we see, do, do you see the difference here people? Okay there's a difference. Let's talk about um, student loan debt and then as we go through student loan debt we'll tell you how we came about with the, the, the two cars um, as well because both the cars are paid for, as well as his associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, and my master's degree. They're all paid for. We got married when? January of 2014. And he had already finished school at that point. I was in, my, in the middle of my sophomore year of, of college. So we made a point, he had about 10,000 left on his student loans from his two years of school. And so we made a point to just kind of pay off his first. His was, and, and we didn't pay it off very quickly. We really, because we were new to a marriage and I was still in school and he was working like a lot. That mm -hmm. was when you were working 12 to 16 hour shifts at a group home. Um, so honestly, we just kind of got settled in our married life and in a routine and we didn't really think about paying it off. However, once I graduated, that was the first thing we did. We moved down to Florida and the first thing we did in Florida in that first year, I think, was um, pay off his student loans. Um, so within, I'm gonna say, the first two years of our marriage, mm -hmm. his student loans were paid off. They were the longest yeah. for paying off because of her being in school and uh, mine being the primary source of income at that point. We were just a little bit slower at getting that one paid off. As soon as I graduated to college, it was like two months later we made the move down to Florida. It, it came time to, to pay off my undergrad. So I did four year, a four year bachelor degree at, um, at IUP, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And 
those four years totaled up to about 35,000 and change. Yeah. Um, now that's actually really low compared to, to many, many undergraduates, undergraduates. Now, why is that? Well, the biggest reason is because I only took out, when you're given an estimate for like Stafford loans, subsidized and unsubsidized Stafford loans from the government, they get, say you can, you're eligible for up to like 60,000 for a single school year. And you don't need, the reality is that money is for school to pay your tuition. And if you're living on campus to help pay your housing as well, and maybe some books and supplies that you get off of the, the, the campus store, it's not for the extras. <laughs> it's not for paying, you know, rent or filling up the gas tank or making a grocery run. Um, and it's not for paying your utility bills either. Some people do that with their student loan money. And that's why they say, oh, I'm eligible for 60,000. I'm gonna take the full 60,000 every single year. Mm -hmm. So 60 times four is what? Like 240,000. That's where people say, well, I will never pay off my student loan debt. You can, you just have to be smart about how much you're borrowing in the first place. So my total for the four years that I was there, I had my, I had my first semester of freshman year paid for. Okay, college is expensive, and I went to a state school. Like, IUP is the second most affordable state school in Pennsylvania, second only to Clarion. IUP was about 17000 a year, and that's really, really affordable. I had my first semester saved up for in college um, because in 2008, when the recession hit, my college savings account took a big hit. And I had about three years to completely rebuild it. And so that, with a bunch of scholarship money, I had about roughly 8,000 in the bank and change. After that, it was all student loans. <laughs> it was whatever student loans that I could get. Once I got married and I moved off campus, um, they label you as a non-traditional student. And so you're eligible then for things like a Perkins loan or a Pell Grant. Um, which helps you tremendously and a couple other scholarships as well. 2018, we left all of our debt behind us that we brought into 2018. Yeah, one of the things that allowed us to do that, um, to kind of just finish my undergraduate loans very early, was that um, my sister had a college savings account as well, but she never went to, to college. She just went straight to the workforce, which is fine totally fine but it was just sitting in there and it was kind of a use it or lose it deal and if Kelly wasn't gonna use it we got my parents got her okay and I got the okay and my parents were like well if, if Kelly's not gonna use it then we're just gonna give it to you and you can help pay off the rest of that debt so that was a good twenty thousand dollars that's how I managed to pay off 35 in student loan debt and um, we did that from 2016 to 2018, we paid off the my 35,000 in student loan debt. As soon as we paid off my student loan debt. That's when she took on her master's degree, which was yeah. $15,000. At the same time, that's when our van that we were driving for since the beginning of our marriage yeah, was finally died. just, it never died, but it was rusty underneath. And it seemed like every week we were taking yeah. it to the car shop and everything. Florida doesn't so. have inspections like Pennsylvania or Virginia does, but if we had to get it inspected, it probably wouldn't have passed. So between the last two years, between 2019 and 2020, we did get the new vehicle that we were paying on and we had our master's degree. And that's what we have finished up in the last two years, mm -hmm. totally paying off where today we sit here. We have two cars. We own both of them. All our schooling is paid for. Serenity, when I was in the hospital, had serenity and everything. Those medical bills are all paid for. Um, we don't have a mortgage just yet that we need to worry about. We're renting. It works for us. Honestly, this moment, again, it, it'll probably hit us, I think, in the next month. Or two. When we, or two. When we have extra money sitting in the bank account and we don't necessarily have to throw it towards student loans or throw it towards a car loan. I think that's, that's when it's probably going to hit us. That, oh, wow, 
we actually have money to spare. <laughs> got, we've got two big goals coming up, okay? Mm -hmm. We have the baby. So for all of you, I hope you've seen our baby announcement video, okay? If you haven't, you can click on the little icon up here and watch it. Um, we have the baby coming up, mm -hmm. but, um, and unlike with Serenity, when Serenity came around, I was still young enough to be on my parents' insurance, and my parents have great insurance. Now I have my own insurance, and it sucks, um, in, to put it in, in loose terms. It really isn't that great. So we may end up with a couple hospital bills out of this pregnancy and this labor and delivery. We know that. I'm going into that. That's what the emergency fund is there for. That's what our savings account is for. Um, we also want to, to venture into the idea of getting a mortgage and buying our own house or building our own house. Phil's parents own a lot of property. Building a house on their land is an option. Like that's an honest to God option for us because we wouldn't have to buy land. That That's something that we have been discussing for a good six months now is getting the idea of expanding our family, which is in the works, and looking into possibly getting a house. And we know that with a house and it comes a mortgage and a mortgage means you are technically in debt. Okay, now we disagree on is this debt, is this, it's still, is this degrading? Okay, it's still debt. <laughs> you gotta figure out what you can afford. You don't want all of your monthly income going towards that mortgage, obviously. It's just like when it came to renting. We figured out what we could afford to rent here and we stepped it up a couple, two, three hundred dollars. And we were unsure of that, but we have managed up to a whole year plus now to manage that uh, rent, right? Yeah. So when it comes to us actually getting a mortgage, now we need to figure out how much can we afford on that mortgage and have it be something that's manageable so that we still have the income yeah. left over. Because we realize that it's probably going to take us a lot longer than six or seven years to pay off a mortgage. Probably. And we'll throw this in here. We also realize that having a mortgage, investing into some property that's your own is a little bit better than giving your rent check to someone else's mortgage. Uh, he and I disagree slightly on this. He sees, he, he and, and my, my father and his family see this as, oh, a mortgage and only, a, it's an investment. And I, I see it as, it's debt. The bank owns your house until you pay that off. <laughs> is it, is, are we going to go about it smart? Yes. Everything he said still stands true. Um, we're <laughs> only going to pay what we can afford, you know, like a monthly rent on a mortgage. Okay. Um, but until we have that piece of paper that says, hey, you own this house, it's um, it's not ours, it's still debt, in my book. That's how I see it. <laughs> it's good debt, there's good debt, there's bad debt. Paying 26% to a credit card, that's bad debt. Mm -hmm. Having a mortgage that you can actually afford and still have good income left over, not so bad debt, yeah, mm -hmm. debt, but not so bad anymore. So when we made the move to here, we went from daycare being like, we'll say $6,000 a year to upwards of $10,000 a year. We went from a $900 rent to a $1,400 rent. When, when your salary increases and you make a move like this, you're like, well, I can afford a better house now. All your bills are gonna increase as well. Your living expenses increase along with your salary. We're now at a point in our life where these debts are paid off. We we have the baby on the way. The, t the timing for this child, the timing for everything coming into play, personally, it couldn't be any better right now. Yeah. Personally, I've always been told that you're never financially going to be ready for this. You're never going to be financially ready for your next child. You're never going to be debt free. Well, we I, I, hate, <laughs> I hate to say it, but because we're two minds that yeah, we might think a little bit different, but in the we end... We think a lot differently, not just a little. We think a lot differently. But, but in the end, we have a we're goal. Very, we're very on the same page with our finances. That's a good point to have. <laughs> so so we're, we're excited about this. Baby on this, the way. Change is happening. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, 
Make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially if you enjoy the content on this channel. And make sure you hit the like button if you like this video. And if you do subscribe, hit the little bell notification and hit enable all notifications. So that every time you have a comment or a video or whatnot, you get a little ping on your phone that says, hey, this happened and it's a good day. And yes, this video was a little bit different than most. It was. It's a lot of us chatting. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. That way we know we need to chat with you guys a little more. Thank you for watching.